What's going on everyone? This is Damon from CCID GFX and in this tutorial I'm going to go over on how to do some rising bubbles with octane scatter and C40 native effectors and it's going to look a little something like this. That's a general idea, but I've practiced this a few times and found some smoother ways to do some of the stuff. So let's dive in. Uh, we are going to start with a plane, and this plane is going to be well, 1,700, 1,000, 50 segments, 50 segments. And then we're going to turn on our uh, lines. And then we are going to grab a displacer, hold down shift to make it a child and we are going to add noise to this displacer and we're going to use displace turbulence with a global scale of 150 and we're going to add about 50 percent contrast then go back into the displacer object settings and crank this up to about 35 percent we also want to add some animation we're going to loop that about 10 times we're going to add Turn this up to about 20 seconds for now. The final will actually only be 10 seconds. And if we hit play, you can see, we'll pause this for a second. You can see we've got some basic animation. It looks pretty, uh, pretty jagged and pretty poppy. So we're going to smooth it out by holding Alt and putting it in a subdivision surface. Now we've got a more smoother surface. Looks like a seabed or an ocean surface it just looks more like water and this is what we're going to use to scatter with so I have my uh, a lot of my main octane buttons set up in a palette for me um, but for, if you want to be able to get to your octane scatter if you don't have this set up you'd go to objects and click on octane scatter and I am using octane v404 um, but this isn't using anything that you wouldn't be able to use on pretty much any version, I think even 3 if you haven't upgraded yet. So we're going to go ahead and drop this into here. We're going to change this to surface. Grab about 1500. Change it from the, the standard. And then we're going to be cloning spheres. We're going to drop the sphere as a child of the scatter. We're going to drop this way down to 3. 20 and we're going to make it a hexahedron we're also going to go into the display and make these circles because we're working with bubbles so why not be able to see the the basic shape of things back in our distribution we are going to scale these a bit with five by five by five then we're going to add some noise into the scale as well the noise we're going to use for this i'm going to use fbm i crank this way up as well as the contrast and now you kind of see what's going on we get more of an organic look get some different size to the bubbles or the spheres at the moment but we want to make these look like well bubbles so we're also going to add a displacer to our sphere here so again hold down shift and we're going to do the same thing we're going to add some noise and this noise is going to be displaced turbulence as well uh, 150 and 50 again and we change the animation speed to 1 and 1 for the animation speed and the loop period then we are going to add a random effector to our octane scatter so go up here to MoGraph effector go to random effector you just see nothing happens because you have to click on octane scatter go to effectors and drop this in there and then we're going to do a uniform scale of 1. I know everything's looking really weird right now. What we're going to do now is we're going to do we're going to start keyframing some stuff. So, go ahead and let's see where we're at here. All right, go back to frame 0 keyframe these these and this we're also going to add some rotation so they're not all in the same shape 
and we're actually going to drop these all down to zero. Keyframe them. We're going to go about uh, 20 frames. Change these back up. And then go to frame 600 and keyframe this up to 500. And those are still looking a little weird. So let's go ahead and add our sphere. Hold down Alt and do a subdivision surface. Now these are looking a little better. Might even want to go in here to this placer and drop this guy down to about five. So we get rid of some of that pinching in there. Let's see what eight looks like. It's got some of the pinching. So split the difference, go with six. All right. That's looking pretty good. Right, and then for the final movement, we're going to keyframe our position. We're going to go up to 600, and we're going to do 1,000. And then we're actually going to drop these down to 300. So the next thing, the thing to do now is that we have our animation basically set up, as you can see now. And we're going to add a camera. Well, first we're going to add an Octane Sky. Then we're going to add in a camera, which probably should have waited on the Octane Sky so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to reset the PSR. And again, if you don't know how to get to this, um, I, that's why I like to create. You can also hit Shift-C and just type in PSR and click it. And it should reset it. Or what you can do is you can actually right click in this area, go down to customize palette and type in PSR into here. And you can drag it up into there and then you just close this and then you can save your layout the way you want. So with this guy, we're going to use a 50 millimeter lens and we're going to change the coordinates. I'm going to drop it back a little bit and we're going to pitch it up about 30 degrees. looking pretty cool now we'll add back in the octane sky leave that at default we're going to add in a light we're going to make that 500 by 500 the coordinates we're going to pitch that up about 90 so it's right underneath them and then we're going to go in and we're going to drop that down to about 10 percent and also make it a little warmer so we're going to go Make that a warm light. And then we'll add a second light. Drag that guy up a little bit. Turn him 90. And push him off to the side. Might even make him a little wider. There we go. We're also going to drop him down to about 10. And add a blue a cool cooler light to it. Now we're going to get into the textures. So let's grab a specular material. First things first with specular materials, you always want to turn on or check fake shadows. Me personally, I like to add a little bit of roughness, even though it's water, it doesn't really matter. Not even that much actually. We're going to point all one, and then we're going to drop this on our spheres. And already we're getting a pretty amazing result result just from the basic. But we also want to change our settings because we're dealing with uh, specular materials. It's best to go into path tracing. You can get get away with it in direct lighting. I just prefer path tracing. About half K. Don't really need a lot of diffuse. Specular. Drop down the GI clamp to one. And these are just my personal settings, what I like to use. Uh, we're going to go into the camera settings. And we're going to affect all our camera settings from the tag here instead of down here in... Uh, Octane settings with camera imager. We are going to use a linear profile. 
and we're going to drop this or go up to 1.5 here do about 0.5 highlight compression do a neutral response and 1.5 in the gamma as well and drag the white point down to black about 0.5 hot pixels removal and we are going to saturate to white So that's looking pretty cool. Let's add uh, some color in the transmission here. Let's go to like kind of a greenish blue. A little too green there, so let's give a little bit more. There we go. Where did I leave this guy? Oh, he's at 10 as well. Alrighty. You can adjust the lighting just how you see fit. This is just kind of what worked for me on the scene. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, up the realism a little bit. And we're going to add like some dust particles to go in our scene. Because a lot of times when you see a lot of underwater footage, you'll see like different dust particles and sand and dirt. So to do that, the easy way to do that is we are going to grab our hole scatter here. And we're going to get rid of the displacer. We're going to draw out the sphere directly underneath there, underneath our octane scatter. We're going to change this to 0.1 size. But 10 segments and we're going to change the seat on this so it's not in the exact same position so I'm going to like I don't know, 5 we're going to up the amount to about 10,000 and then we're going to grab a diffuse material drop that on there and I think what we're going to do in the opacity for here is we're going to grab a fall off map and maybe uh, put up to 0.1 For a second so you can see the different particles in there now so it adds a little more depth to it which we can do some depth of field as well if you want now I'm in order to do that let's uh, try to get seen with some decent amount of uh, bubbles go into our thin lens turn off autofocus uh, go up to like one grab your focus tool here and select anywhere you want like I don't know, let's go to a mid area See, it's pretty decent. We can even also go back into our settings and add a little vignetting. I'd say that's looking pretty good. And then one last thing, if you want to add a little more, uh, I guess, organic feel to the movement in these bubbles, what we can do is we can add a formula effector to our plane. So if we go up to effectors, click on formula, drag that down underneath our plane. Uh, we don't need it that much, so we're going to go 100 on the Y. And if we go out and we hit play, so if we turn off our scatters, it'll move a lot faster. You can see that it's rippling inwards, which is fine for some. I don't know. I just figure it should be going outwards. That's just my personal. So to figure out how to do that, I guessed a little bit. And I changed right up in here. I changed this plus to a minus. Lucky guess, honestly. And now it's going outward. Let me turn everything back on. Go back into our camera. And that's just going to give us a little more of a turbulent a turbulent uh, feel to it when the bubbles show up in the, in, the, uh, in the frame. And then the last thing we're going to do is we are going to go to frame 270. We're going to grab both our spheres and we're going to keyframe them. And then we're going to go all the way to 300 and we're going to zero them out. So essentially, by the end of the frame, the bubbles have disappeared. So 
so that's about it. That's uh, that's how I did some bubbles uh, for a job a little while back uh, with Octane Scatter and C4D effectors. Um, this is actually kind of more turned into a quick tip, and I have another one coming up. It may take a little longer because it's a, a little more of a intense animation, but it's using Scatter the same way. And that one looks like this. So it's kind of a similar technique. Um, what I ended up doing was I used a displacer on the sphere and uh, I used the octane scatter to scatter the bubbles and a few other steps here and there for lighting and texturing and I'll go over all that in the next tutorial. So as usual, I like to disclaim that this is how I do things, not how it is done. Um, if you like it, let me know. If you have any comments, questions, or concern, also let me know and uh, I look forward to... Um, Hearing from you all, and I guess until next time, I'm Damon from CCID GFX. Thanks.